In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create a pencil sketch look inside of Luminar Neo. Even if you're not interested in making your photos look like sketches, this is still going to be a very valuable lesson because we're going to be diving deep into layers, blend modes, and how the two interact to create special effects in our photos. And you'll be able to take those concepts and apply them to all of your photo editing. The first thing I'll do is crop down this photo of my son, leaving a little bit of negative space on the left hand side. And then I'll come to the layer section, right click and duplicate the layer. So we're going to leave the layer underneath intact. That's going to be our original. And we're going to start to edit this layer on top. We want to convert it to black and white. That's our first step. And I'm just going to play with the luminance sliders just to give us a little bit more of an interesting photo. Let's push the blues up. And now we've got a bit more contrast before and after. Okay, that's a good start. Now we're going to duplicate this black and white layer. So we have two versions of this black and white layer. And we're going to change the blend mode down to difference. Now it just turns everything black. We can't see anything because the difference between the two layers is nothing. It's black. And that is going to enable us to start trying to reveal our lines. So you might think boosting up the small and medium and large details is going to give us a nice outline, which it does do. However, I found that taking them in the opposite direction actually gives us a cleaner line, particularly when we add in sharpening. Look at that before and after. Now to get the best out of your edges, I would recommend diving into the details, protection, sharpening, masking, all of this as well. However, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple for the sake of this video. If you want to amplify the effect that we've created here, just open up another instance of this tool and go again. And look at that, we've doubled down on the tool effect. That's given us a nice outline, but it's the opposite of what we want. We want those white lines to be black and we want the black background to be white. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to select both of these layers and I'm going to merge them down. That's going to create a flattened layer that looks exactly like what we're viewing on screen at the moment. Whereas prior to that, if I hide that, yes, this is what we see, but it's made up of the effect of blending those two together with that difference mode. If I change the difference mode, you can see that it's only because of the way that these layers are interacting together that it looks the way it does. So for us to do anything further with this, we have to flatten it down. Hence the reason I've created this new layer right here. And that, my friends, gives us the ability to invert the look of this layer. And we do that with the develop tool and we jump into curves. So if you don't see curves, just click on it to open it up. And we're going to take the top point, which represents the white pixels, and we're going to bring that down. That makes them black. Now we're going to grab the bottom point here, which represents the black pixels. And ooh, you can see as I bring this up, we are starting to reveal white pixels. So now we have a visual that looks a lot more like pencil outlines. Perfect. If we want to, we can close that tool down open up a new instance of develop, and then we can jump into the curves to control the darkness of those lines if we want to. All right, stage one complete. Now we want to add some shading. So I'm going to duplicate this bottom layer, so our colored layer, and drag it up to the top. So now we see our original photo, but once again, I want to convert that to black and white. I'm gonna do a similar thing to what I did last time, which was just brighten up the blues and the yellows. Gives us a bit more contrast to start with. And that's what I'm after now is a bit of contrast. So I'm going to jump into the dramatic filter because that's a really great way to kickstart our contrast before and after. And now we're looking in a pretty good place because what I'm after doing is reducing the number of values we have in our photo. So I want a really bright white and a really dark black. And that's pretty much what we've got at the moment. But we can push that further by putting an S shape into our curve, something like that. But here's the thing, I don't want a pure black and I don't want a pure white. So I'm just gonna grab that black point and move that up ever so slightly. That's just giving me a dark gray. And now I can pull that white point down and now I've got an off white as well. Now, the reason that that is important is because what we're gonna do now is add some pencil strokes. And the way that I found works relatively well is to add some film grain initially. So I'm gonna put the amount to 100. I want nice big film grain and a lot of roughness. Whenever we first apply that in Luminar, it looks awful. It's just a rough rendering so that our computer can handle all of that noise information. 
but what we're going to do is use all of those little dots to emulate pencil strokes and I'm going to do that with the blur tool so not the Gaussian blur because that just blurs everything what I want to do is create a motion as if we're stroking with the pencil you can do left to right but what I prefer to do uh, because I'm a righty and all of my strokes sort of end up going at about 45 degrees is actually put the pencil strokes on that direction all right so before and after with that effect and now we want those two layers to interact with each other so underlying that layer we have our pencil outline and now on top we have a kind of shading layer and so all we need to do is find a brightness level for this shading that we think looks good I don't like to go too heavy let's go around a quarter and then rather than leaving it in normal mode because as you can see as we push this up the greater the opacity we have of this layer the more it hides that pencil line underneath what we want to do is see the pencil line in its full effect and we can do that by changing the blend mode to either darken or multiply and now it doesn't matter how much I add this shading effect the pencil line layer stays as it is but the cool thing is we don't have to stop with just one layer of shading if we want to we can create another layer of shading so I'm going to duplicate the very bottom layer which was our original photo and drag it to the top of the stack again we'll do a quick black and white conversion and I'm going to jump into the develop section so that I can access the curves again and this time I'm just going to define a narrower band of dark pixels something like that should be fine and I'm just going to follow the same principle again where we come down and we add some film grain let's go for a nice high amount crank all those sliders up and again visit motion start putting a bit of motion into that but this time I'm just going to go straight up and down just so that we have a different angle to our pencil strokes so before and after and I also just want this applied only to my son rather than all the background as well and so I'm going to jump into the layer properties and this time we're going to go into masking and background removal AI and now I'll just click remove and that's going to make sure that those strokes are masked just where he is so again we need to play with our blend mode because normal's not really doing it for us so we could either darken or multiply in this case I think I'll go for darken and now again we can play with that opacity slider just to introduce that effect with a little bit more subtlety from here I'm just going to merge these layers down so that my final effects can be applied to a single layer so for example what I would like to do now is make it look as if we rendered more pencil work in the center of the frame and then kind of lost interest towards the edges and there's a couple of ways we can do this the first method is my least favorite but it's going to get the job done and in a pinch this is what you could do we're going to crank the amount up on the vignette but rather than going in the darker direction like we may often do we're going to go to the opposite way and that's going to make it look as if we're just sort of bleeding off towards the paper on the outside we can make a couple of adjustments there but I don't want to stop with just one application of this tool I want to go again but we're going to make this more of a rectangular shape and I'm going to make it more emphasized to just drop off completely to white at the edge of the frame so before and after so that is absolutely one approach that you could do but I'm going to actually remove that vignette and let me show you my preferred method I'm going to come over and add another layer in currently we're in the papers and background textures I want to go to the vignettes and my horizontal vignettes and here you can see we actually have some texturized very artistic looking vignettes and we can use that to blend out to pure white in a more artistic way so for example if we went for this one here we'll just open that up for now we click on it once and that's going to load that in but we want the opposite of what we see here so all we need to do is exactly what we did last time for inverting the colors or should I say the values we just switch those points around and now you can see we're pushing out to white and now what we need to do is come to the blend mode and this time we're going to change it to screen and what we can also do with this textured effect is zoom out a little bit and actually increase the scale and that way we're going to actually be able to see more of that effect kind of encroaching up the drawing helping to give that more organic and artistic look all right let's go with that and as a final step what I'd like to do is add yet another texture so I'm going to revisit my texture library and in the papers and background textures I just need to find one that has a nice paperly quality to it so let's go for this one here I'd already got that in my textures library but if I zoom in nice and close you can clearly see that's got a lovely paperly texture to it 
For textures like this, a really great option is overlay. However, if you have a lot of white in your image, you're not really gonna see that texture. It's only gonna appear more in the shadows. So a better way to approach this is with a two layered approach. So what I'm gonna do is put down a first instance that I'm gonna put into multiply mode, and then we can just drop the opacity back to a point where we're just starting to see that texture appear. And now we're gonna double down with that layer. I'm gonna duplicate it. And this time, rather than having it in multiply mode, I can benefit from that overlay mode. And we're gonna see a really nice application of that texture through the entire image in both the highlights and the shadows. And then as the final adjustment, I think I'm just gonna make a slightly tighter crop again. I just feel like we're including just a little bit too much negative space. So let's hit the crop. Here is our original photo. And here is our more pencil-like interpretation. Photo on the left, pencil interpretation on the right. So before and after. So that's my approach to creating a pencil sketch like emulation inside Luminar Neo. Let me know in the description what you thought to it. And if you are interested in adding those textures to your own editing arsenal, I have a link in the description below to my entire bundle collection. And I will see you in the next video, which has popped up right there. And if you haven't subscribed already, um, you can click that button right there. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.